Hello sisters. When you think of spring, what do you think about? I'm going to sit back and let you think about that for a few seconds. Okay, time's up. When I think of spring, I think of a new beginning, a fresh start, and maybe it's a time we can start all over again and again. And for me, again and again, but hopefully not this year. There are several areas in our life that we can spring clean. We can spring clean our social media. We can spring clean our relationships. We can spring clean our testimony and do that this weekend with General Conference. But for now, we're gonna talk about spring cleaning our homes. Now for me, when I start spring cleaning, I will choose one room per day and I'll start at the top and work my way down because I don't wanna redust. I hear gravity is real and dust falls. Declutter. After a year, I recognize that I have collected a lot of stuff that I don't need. I will sort through them and I will give away, I will throw them away, or I will keep it. Now that room is ready to be cleaned. Let's get started. Because we are social distancing ourselves, as a presidency, we each videotaped our own tips separately. I hope these are helpful. Enjoy. This is Demis with a few tips for spring cleaning. Um, picture frames. Uh, I always have a hard time when I spray the glass and clean it getting down in the corners here and so I just use a small paintbrush to just get these edges or alternately you could use a cotton swab that has been uh, dampened. Either way you can get these corners that, that collect dust. Hey ladies, my second tip is for cleaning carpet. We all know that children spill, no matter how many times we tell them not to take their Kool-Aid out into the living room. So there's a nice spill on my carpet sample. And for purposes of the video, I'm not gonna wait for that to be like the kids didn't tell you about it and it's been sitting there for hours, but trust me, the result is the same. So you just dab it, if it's still wet, just dab it like that. Don't rub it, just dab. Then you pour some more water on it just a little bit warm, doesn't have to be. And then you take regular table salt, pour it on there, and the salt absorbs the color. Can you see the color being absorbed right up into the salt? And then you scrape it off. Well, ordinarily you wouldn't have a sink, but you just, you just keep picking it up like that. I used to have a wet vac, which was great for this. And then you just keep doing it over and over until all the color is gone. And then in the morning when it's dry, you vacuum it. See, it's still, it's soaking up all that color. And you just keep doing it over and over and over. And all that red Kool-Aid will be gone. This was really intense color, so it might take a while. But I don't wanna keep doing this over and over for the video, that's boring. But you just have to trust me that that really works. Okay, ladies, this is my last cleaning hint for the day. Um, Marky uses a pumice stone, which I used to use, but then I didn't know what to do with the stone after it got all germy. So now I use this. It's found in the plumbing section of Home Depot, and it's uh, plumber's ab abrasive tape. And I just cut a small section off like that. And then you go down in your toilet and you just rub around that ring and see, my, I really don't have a ring because I've been practicing. And then you just throw it away and you wash your hands or use gloves. But I find that a little bit easier than a pumice stone. I have one more hint, but we gotta go back in my living room. Hi, okay, my last tip is how to involve the children or just yourself if you want to go really fast. Um, it's something I did with my kids when the home teacher called and said he's going to be over in five minutes and that was to play the William Tell Overture. Alexa, play William Tell Overture and as we wait for it to get into it, it's a perfect song uh, to go fast to and I would tell the kids just try to clean this room before the song is over. It's a two minute song 
and you'll hear in a minute how it really gets you going. Here it comes. Okay, you've got two minutes of that, and the kids love it. They think it's really funny. And that's my tip for spring cleaning. Thank you, bye. One of the most important tips I think that I have learned um, about cleaning is to practice consistency and um, maintain a schedule. I know that can be hard with kids running around and um, even if you don't have kids running around, maybe you work, um, maybe you have a husband running around, um, <laughs> but it can be hard to maintain that. But come up with a routine that works for you and stick to that. And in the long run, it's going to create a lot less work for you than it would if you don't have a consistent routine. I myself am a Monday cleaner. I wake up on Monday morning and I like to clean the whole house on Monday. I do all my bathrooms, all my mopping, um, deep clean my kitchen, all of that. All my once a week chores I do on Monday morning. Um, and that's what works for me. It takes me three, four hours usually on Monday morning. Um, and I do all my cleaning. Now that does not include my laundry because I have to do that all throughout the week. But that's how I do my cleaning. I know that some people break it up into days and um, maybe Monday is the day that they clean bathrooms and Tuesdays they do bedrooms, Wednesdays they clean floors. And that works for some people. Um, but just find something that works for you and develop a cleaning routine that's going to work for you. It's going to work for your lifestyle. And overall, it will create less work for you and less time that you have to spend. One of my favorite cleaning hacks is using just a glass of water and a toothbrush to clean my baseboards. I try and come through and do it like this once a year and then I just dust it or kind of catch it with a mop a lot of the time. Um, but you just take your toothbrush and you scrub in along all those corners, down into this corner. Oops, sorry. And and that end of that toothbrush is going to be able to kind of pull all that out there, out of there if you just work it for a while. And then I just take a damp, wet cloth and go over the top of it one more time. And it picks up all the stuff that the toothbrush didn't pick up. And you can even go along the edges there with the toothbrush too if you want to kind of scrub that out. But I'll give you some nice, clean baseboards. All right, one of my favorite cleaning tricks is for the kitchen sink. You can use either Ajax that I use or if you're a Comet user, you can use Comet. Um, and you just have your sink wet and just sprinkle it in there throughout the whole sink and let it set for just a couple seconds. And then just take a wet scrubby. This is just a Scotch Bright pad and scrub them and it takes all the black marks and grime off your kitchen sink. I don't know if you guys can remember what it looked like right before I started scrubbing but there's black marks um, from like pot scrubbing on it and stuff and if you just scrub it with a little bit of that and rinse it off it'll take all of those black marks off of your thing. I mean, obviously it won't take dents and stuff, but it works great. Hi sisters, this is Megan Sackett and I am coming at you with some more cleaning tips for spring cleaning. Um, my ideas all involve cleaning using a household food item that many of us have, maybe in your tree outside or at, your, at the grocery store because these aren't in super short supply, <laughs> like some of the cleaning products are. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can clean your home, some basic things in your home using a lemon. Um, like I said, some cleaning products are in short supply right now, um, or maybe you prefer to not have you know, certain chemicals in your home and you want to use a more natural route. So this fits both of those. And so I'm going to start, first of all, teaching you how to clean your microwave 
using a lemon and water. That's all you need in a rag, okay? So you're gonna take a lemon. This one is massive, so I'm probably actually just gonna use um, half of it. And you'll just chop it in half. Um, I'm gonna quarter mine. I'm just gonna use two halves. You're gonna put it in a microwave safe bowl and then add um, a little bit of water. I have two cups here, but I might even add it to the very top. In fact, let me hear you get a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna fill it all the way to the, well, almost all the way to the top. And then you just stick it in your microwave that has nasty crusted food on it, as mine oftentimes does. <laughs> stick it in there, set it on high power for about three to five minutes. I'm gonna do mine for three minutes, but somewhere in that range will work. And then you just let it do its thing for about three minutes. Okay, once the three minutes is over, then you're gonna let that sit in the microwave for about five minutes and just let all that steam do its thing and so you leave it for about five more minutes before you pull it out. Okay, after about five minutes, let's see how it's looking in here. So your bowl of water is and lemons is gonna be pretty hot. You may need a hot pad depending on how hot it is. Um, but you're gonna come through and everything should just wipe off really easy. So some of this, you're just gonna get a wet rag, some of this stuff up here and it'll be nice and clean and really okay. easy to do. We are now in the shower <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how you can use a lemon for a couple things in the shower. So first thing, um, all of this nasty grind that can get on the faucet or you know, if you've got a bathtub connected with your shower, I'll show you how to get that off. So you're just gonna take like a half a lemon, cut it in half, and then you're going to use just the seedy, fleshy part of the actual lemon and just scrub it like you would with the sponge. You're just gonna get on there. I've got some hard water issues on mine, but this is gonna even help a little bit with that. You're gonna just scrub that lemon on there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Try and get it in all those spots where that acid in the lemon can really, really work at it. And then you're just gonna take a microfiber cloth and dry it off. Mmm, it smells so good. And you can work on that. Obviously, if I was doing this one-handed, or sorry, two-handed, I would really scrub it, but especially on there, you can see how shiny that is getting now. So I'll just keep doing that a couple more times until I get some of that hard soap scum off until it shines nice and bright, like that little middle section right there. You can see a difference from here to here. Looks much better, and it smells great too. All right, back in the kitchen again, another great uh, use of lemons is to help clean your cutting boards. Um, so if you have like a wooden cutting board or even a plastic one like this, um, you can take your lemon, half a lemon, these ones are already squeezed, here's a fresh one, half a lemon and a little bit of coarse salt. Again, I'm gonna pour that salt just right into the top of the lemon like this. And then I'm just gonna scrub. I'll preferably do this over the sink <laughs> so it doesn't make such a mess. But I'm gonna scrub all those little spots you never know what kind of nasty things are just lingering in your cutting board if you're not really scrubbing it good. So this is a good thing to do if you haven't or don't do it regularly. Just use that lemon that you just chopped. Um, if you have an extra one, go ahead and put some salt in it. Scrub that cutting board and then rinse it out and your cutting board should be nice and clean. And it smells good. <laughs> and finally, when you're all done with your lemons, you can cut them up into small bits and toss it down your disposal and then let that run for just a minute. And you end, I wish you guys could smell the video. Just imagine you're smelling a nice fresh lemon scent coming up from the bottom of your sink. It's amazing. <laughs> Vanessa, will you grab a duster and wipe the fan down for me? Of course, Grandma, I would love to. Oh, thank you, thank you. One down. Grandma, I can't quite get it. Oh. <coughs> Grandma, you gotta dust once a month, not every five years. Thank you. I'll take that under advisement. Yeah, Grandma. Yeah, you come on, should, Grandma. Come Girls, on. have you seen my phone anywhere? No, Grandma, we haven't. I can't find it. I don't know where I put it. When's the last time you had it? Now, I don't know, but I need to call the bishop now. We can.
my heroes. Isabel, you're true heroes. You really need to spring clean New York house, ma'am. Um, well, how often should I spring clean? Once a month. Way more often. Way more often. Mm -hmm. We found a moldy sandwich. Our job is done. We are out. Peace. Thank you, sisters, for watching our spring cleaning tips and tricks and the hack ideas. <laughs> we are glad that we could share some of those with you. Hopefully some of them will be helpful to you, um, that you can implement them in your homes. Um, we wish that we could actually be together right now so that we could share some of these ideas and bounce ideas back and forth because we know that some of you are cleaning experts as well and would have um, wisdom and experience and could share too. So if you actually have any great cleaning ideas or tips or things that you do in your home that you have found really helpful and effective, um, go ahead and just write it in the comments under this video. And we can kind of just like have a little sisterly discussion in the comments down below since we can't actually be together right now. We miss you, ladies. We miss you and we love you and you're in our thoughts and our prayers. And this time when we are kind of quarantined to ourselves and at home, we can't be together at church. Um, we hope that we can find things like cleaning to help you know fill our time with productive positive things um, we're excited for general conference this weekend we hope that you can all have the opportunity to watch and to tune in and to listen to our prophet and our leaders it will definitely be a unique conference experience so we're all looking forward to that um, yeah. and good luck with the cleaning efforts good luck with spring cleaning your home and if you need any other tips or ideas or tricks feel free to reach out to us or reach out to your ministering sisters and we can all kind of help each other out in those efforts right now. So thanks sisters. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.